And welcome to WTL, everybody. I'm your host, Andy Classen, joined by... Gibran. Ah, <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> yep, oh, we're back. Man. The season is upon yeah, us. Yeah, I can't wait, man. Football is here. We got some preseason <laughs> NFL yes. games that we're going to smash here tonight. Yep. And we're going to talk some UFC fight night, right? Of course, got have to. to. Got to get there. <laughs> uh, and then let's talk some Rookie of the Year MVP, yep. maybe some defensive player of the year. Yeah, a little prop stuff for yeah, the NFL. Go. The Wrap season is up. upon us, just like you said, and this preseason football gets me shaking, man. This stuff is awesome. Uh, this preseason stuff is wild. I love it. <laughs> like, uh, I love it. Uh, awesome is one way to put it. Um, but, man, you're you're trying to project who's going to be playing, who's exactly. not going to We're going to get into it. <laughs> uh, I think we're going to start with a, a local team here. Yeah. You know, uh, Bears versus Chiefs. 12 o'clock kickoff on the NFL Network. Yeah. Now, this might be a surprise to a lot of folks out there. Chicago's <laughs> favored, three and a half. Surprise to me, for sure. Nah, uh, come <laughs> on. I'm just kind of throwing some shade at Andy here, the Bears fan. Uh, like you said, yeah, the Bears uh, have the line at three and a half, a minus 110 bet. Uh-huh. The money line for them is at minus one, uh, 165. But what I'm looking at, Andy, a little bit at this game, if I'm looking at anything at all, uh, that over under is sitting at 35 points. I just think yeah. that is a lot of points for a preseason game, yeah. uh, especially you know I I don't believe the Bears are going to project a lot of offense in this game. No. And with that being said, I don't understand why they're favored. If uh, <laughs> well, uh, there's a few things going on here. Yeah, uh, Fields is going to play a lot. Right. Okay. So you got your starting quarterback that's in there. You want to give him some confidence. So you're going to let him play a few extra series. Uh, I will say that the Bears camp doesn't look good right now. They just had the, another receiver go down to injury, David Moore. So yep. now you have Moore, Pringle, Pettis, and the rookie uh, Jones Jr. Yeah, all out with all injury. Out. All the receivers are out with injury right now. This yep. is ridiculous. Uh, Ryan Pools, the GM, is trying to you know mop things up with the Roquan Smith. Um, yeah, he wants out. <laughs> They're not giving me any respect. And then he, the GM's coming out. Yeah, we did. We gave him respect. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that's what the a, last thing you want to hear. What a dumpster fire. Um, but <laughs> the, yeah, the way that I'm looking at this, Andy, is that the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, they are the proven winner here, obviously, but they got a lot of new pieces that they have to try out here in this preseason. Yeah. Uh, they got a brand new receiving core. It's brand spanking new, but all veterans. except for except for they're Travis veterans. Kelsey. Except for Travis Kelsey. They're all new. I know. It's Juju Smith, it's MVS, and their uh, rookie Sky Moore all have to figure out this repertoire with yeah. Mahomes. So I think they'll leave him in there for at least probably two, maybe three series, and that could be enough to shut the Bears down. Well, outscore him at least. Exactly. I don't think that's going to be too hard. Uh, but I will say, uh, you flip over and look at the Chiefs camp, and there is no news. Yeah, I mean it's all good competition on both sides of the ball. Yeah, oh, and we're getting healthy. The yep. opposite, uh, Rashid <laughs> um, Fenton, that cornerback. Yep, he's back. Uh, Carlos Dunlap, late signee for sure. Um, they're in, integrating him more, so he's playing a lot more, yep. doing some good things. Uh, and I, that's exactly how I would want my camp to be. Yeah, quiet. You were you know, exactly like, quite no Nothing's drama, going on. no drama. There so, hasn't been drama since Hill left, and that's kind of the way it should be. And I, that's where I feel like the Chiefs they know who they are, they know what they are, so exactly. they're gonna, they're gonna pull all those guys. And Juju Smith, he knows what he's doing, yeah. I MVS guess, knows, yeah, they know. Uh, so I, I do, I kind of like this line with Chicago. <laughs> this might be the only time <laughs> you're, you're gonna I, pick I'm gonna the, take Bears. the Bears. I'm gonna get it in early, go with that, ride that three and a half <laughs> Chicago. Don't move it on me though, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I could jump on board with you, but I'd be looking. <laughs> at that under, if anything, I'm going to bet on this one. So the, the under sounds pretty good as well. Yeah. All right. So let's move on. Let's move out west, sucker. Yeah. Dallas Cowboys. They're taking their Boo. little show to <laughs> Denver. Yeah. That's going to be the nightcap Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, on the NFL Network, eight o'clock kickoff. Denver has it at three and a half. Yeah. For the favorites. Well, this is the or three. This that goes back and forth. Yeah, for sure. This is the uh the dawning of a new era in Denver. It's the first time that you're gonna uh-huh. see Mr. Russell Wilson in orange. Uh I, I, I like it at a minus three right now for, for Denver. Uh really? le- like you said, with the know. Cowboys coming to town, I do, they're not gonna play Dak. They're not gonna play Zeke. They're Probably, probably not even going to play CD. These guys are so injury yeah, yeah. prone that they 
pretty much don't even play in the preseason. That's why I like this Denver trying to, you know, probably giving Russell at least a couple series and then, you know, they have a lot of young yeah, players on the get him in there. They have a lot of young players on the offensive side of the ball that need reps as well. So I really like the Denver minus three here. And if you're too scared of that, go with the minus one fifty at the money line. I really like that as well. Okay. All right. Well, what do you make of this uh kind of an oddball deal? You don't see it as much as you used to. There's yeah. a, they're having a joint practice. Right. Cowboys, Broncos. So they're gonna <laughs> kinda have like a feeling out for sure. session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, all padded up but no tackle or you know what what how that's well, just fights break out, that's about it. <laughs> right, right, right. Everybody's big time, big time, right? Yeah. Um I, I there is a one injury here that I think is going to help out the Denver Broncos, and that's Will Greyer, mm-hmm. who's in a competition right now for that two spot with Cooper Rush as the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, they're going back and forth. He's out with a groin injury. Yeah. So now you're you're getting less snaps, zero snaps for Dak, right? Because he, if he does, he's gonna he's gonna take one series, one maybe, se- maybe one series, and they're gonna right? probably be running plays, and that's mm-hmm. that's it. Yeah, because you you can't. I mean, he gets hurt all the freaking time. You cannot and lose you, him, you and just, he is their lifeblood this year. If he, he doesn't really play, he really they is. don't make it. So that, then it all comes down to Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush, right? Yep. And and the, and there's no. Uh, anybody nipping at his heels with Will Geyer being out. Exactly. You know, and that's what all projections are showing that he's probably not going to play. Um, so I like <laughs> the fact that Denver is going to probably have Russell in there a little longer. Yep. Okay. Uh, and they are set at their backup quarterback and they're getting healthy. I, I just, I like Denver too here. Yeah. And it's at home. They want to put on a show for their fans. Exactly. And when, and you they know. just, they have the better defense. They, mm-hmm. they do. And, you know, those guys play a lot more yeah. in the preseason. They're trying to get, you know, yeah. game reps, get up to speed. And so I, I like the Denver defense ones playing against the Cowboy twos. I, I, I'll take yeah, that yeah. matchup any yeah. day. And especially when it's such a small line at minus three at home for right, Denver. Right, right. Uh, I, I really like it. And they're going to want to put on, like I said, put it on a show. Uh, Melvin Gordon, the third though, he is hurt. He yep. set out uh, last couple practices with a foot injury. We'll see how that goes. Um, but you do have a true competition here between Josh Johnson and Brett Rippon. Yep. <laughs> That's a familiar name. Yep. Um, Rippon right now is listed at they just came out with an unofficial right. depth chart. He's the third quarterback, <laughs> but that's that competition that I like. For sure. They're both going to want to ball out, and you don't have that on the other side. So roll with the Broncos. That's what we're talking about. All yeah. right, now uh, we got a Sunday preseason Yeah, we got our first on, Sunday football of the year. Who and do we got? Who do we, we got, got the Minnesota Vikings traveling to Las Vegas. The Raiders. To take on the Raiders. <laughs> Uh yeah, this is a, this is gonna be a fun one on Sunday. Like I said, everybody's gonna be tuning in. You know, getting yeah, back yeah. into that Sunday football feel. Another Sunday, our another NFL Network three yeah. three thirty three twenty five kickoff. Raiders are the favorites at three and a half. What do you think? Yeah, no, uh, this is a tough one, Andy, because I re- <laughs> <laughs> I really want to cheer for the Vikings here. Yeah, uh, but uh-huh. I really think the Raiders are. Uh, gonna try and you know come out you know have some fast pace uh, you know trying to put all these pieces together with Devonte in the new offense all that kind of stuff right so I really think that they're gonna try and jump out now maybe the Vikings have the better pieces on the backside of the game which I think they probably do with the with the younger players coming in and all that kind of stuff so uh-huh, uh-huh. I I really think the Raiders maybe jump out here to you know a seven ten point lead or whatever but I do think the Vikings probably bring it back to that three and a half where that line is and cover. You think they're going to cover and so but you could still have the Raiders winning by 3. Right. If this line stays at three and a half and, or more. And that's what I see on a lot of these preseason games. I think they're a lot closer. They're priming you. It, yeah, <laughs> that they are. Uh and that you don't see a lot of blowouts. You don't see a lot of, you know, people running up scores and stuff just because it's it's more of a Glorified practice than yeah. anything. Coach and coaches want to keep the young bucks the pressure situation on. Exactly, they want to see how they respond. Exactly, and so, and yeah. and they do want them to score and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, but it's it's such a it's such a back and forth with these with these preseason games. I don't see this opening up more than a three point game. So I really like the Vikings at a plus three and a half. Well, there's a there's a few things to like here. New head coach, okay, Kevin O'Connell. Yep, right. Um, one thing that does give me a little bit of pause is they're moving to a 3-4 defense. Yeah. First time the Vikings have had have installed a base 3-4 since 1985. 
That's, that's so it's been a while. So yeah. they, I mean, it's kind of like a culture. They've always run the four three there. Uh, one pickup though that sneaky. Really good pickup. Dalvin Tomlinson. Yeah. Spent the first four seasons with the Giants. He was the middle. He was the cog of their 3-4 defense. He was the man there. I think that was – and he played his college ball at Alabama. Alabama. So, I mean, you know he's a stud. Yeah. And uh, kind of flew under the radar, but the Vikings absolutely needed a guy like that if they were going to move For sure. to this 3-4 defense. Offensively, I think they could be explosive this year. Oh, yeah. Really freaking Big good. time. And I think they're going to want to show that off a little bit here. Okay. Uh, and so, I, I mean, I, I think they're going to air it out, okay? Oh, yeah. And you know Sean Mannion, the backup quarterback. Yeah, yeah. He can air it out. He too. can air it out. Okay. But, yeah, even the guy behind him and Kellen Mond, yeah. he wants to put his imprint on the mm-hmm. game. He's, you know, a higher draft pick than most. Uh, and he really wants to get in there and show what he's made of, too. He wants that second position just as much right. as Sean Mannion does. Right. So, like you said, if they if they can, you know, get a few uh, – they can get a few, uh, you know, reps in there with Justin Jefferson and KJ Osborne and, and people like that. They can really uh, probably put up some points. Even Albert Wilson, he's down in the, uh, you know, depth chart for the Vikings, but he's a really fast guy. So um, <laughs> fast guy. Yeah, and uh, Johnson as well, Bisbee Johnson. So they got some really, you know, talented wide receivers here, and you know, I think they're going to stay in this game if not win it. So all that being said, you're completely wrong. <laughs> okay, the Raiders are going to run away with this one. They oh, want to put on a show. Here we go. Okay, they have a new coach too, Josh McDaniels. Yep. And they had an even more impressive offseason with the waiver wire, picking up Josh or Josh McDaniels picking up Jarrett Stinton, right? Yes. The kid that he drafted yep. in New England. Yep. Had him for the last four years. Okay, and then yeah. you watched the Hall of Fame game last I did. Thursday. I did. Team high, 96 yards passing. Yep. Had that highlight 12-yard touchdown run. He showed did. the wheels. And Chris Collinsworth couldn't help himself. Even during the broadcast said, well, he's the only guy that fully knows this offense on the roster right now. Here's a guy that knows the Here's offense. Here's, Here's the, the guy, guy Al. You, know, you better – I like Chris, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I don't. I'm just saying he has a – Here's a guy. He, he says Here's that guy. about a million times. Oh, but. I know. So well, I say stuff too, uh, <laughs> but no, yeah, you're no you're absolutely it. right with Jared Stidham. He, he's d- definitely the better backup quarterback in the game, uh, and they have a proven, you know, not a proven starter, but a guy that started multiple games yeah, for yeah, the yeah. 49ers, uh, Nick Mullins, even behind yeah, him. So yeah. y- you're probably you know not too far off on this, and they obviously have Demarcus Robinson, the speedster from Kansas City, as a uh, underlying uh, receiver here. So there's a couple explos- uh, explosive offenses is here. Uh, I guess we'll see uh, who comes out on top. I just think that the Raiders are going to probably leave their second stringers in there a little bit longer. They're a little bit more acclimated. They've already played a game, yeah. and they're at home. They want to put on a show in Las Vegas. That's what Las, Las Vegas was built it, to put on a show. It's a show. Yeah, it's a show. It is a show. Like They don't <laughs> lose the entertainment uh, aspect of it at all. I think the Vikings will put up a good fight. I think it'll be a good game, but I do see the Raiders covering all right. that. Three and a half. Okay. What do you think about that? I I mean I I can't I I mean we're, we we are heading to Minneapolis next week with our father to watch the Minnesota Vikings play. So I might be dipping into that uh, charisma a little bit, but I do like them to cover. I don't think this game's going to outstretch a three point. Uh, victory for the Raiders. What's the over under? What's your book have it at? Right 34. Now? 34. And you like that? I mean, if you had to do it, you'd probably go with the over. I would. You would go, the, I, I would too, there at that spot cause for all the reasons we just talked exactly. about. Exactly. I think we have a couple pro- prolific offenses. Yeah. They're going to want to air it out. I really like everything you're hearing from Kevin McConnell up in Minnesota. For it's sure. Positive. Yeah. Kurt Cousins loves the guy. He's listening to him. Yeah. He got the weapons. I think Thielen, Adam Thielen is going to have a bounce back year. <laughs> well, let, let's yeah, a Thielen. bounce back year. Like a bounce back I year mean, for yeah. this guy is, you know, he's so underrated. Just because Justin Jefferson might be the best receiver in the league doesn't mm-hmm. mean that Adam Thielen's taking a back seat. He's still going to get his touchdowns. He's still going to get his uh, chunk plays. So, yeah, yeah. and he's a guy that doesn't need the spotlight to right. really, you know, be open all the time for Kirk Cousins. 
Justin Jefferson is a different animal, obviously, but right. you always need that second receiver. He, it's the same thing that he was doing with Stephon Diggs three yeah. or four years ago. Yeah. He's been in this position. He knows how to do it, and what he sees is touchdowns most of the time. Nothing wrong with seven catches, 120 yards, and a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, right. like he, he's, he's just like satisfied with yeah, that, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Like, ending the year with you know, 12, 13 touchdowns is a down year. I, I guess I'll take it. <laughs> Pretty good down year for your second and third receiver. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so one bet that I want to throw in here, Andy, and okay. I know okay. that somebody's right. going to call me out here, okay. but it's one that I really thought uh, they had wrong right away is the Panthers versus the Commanders. Is it at a pick? Ah. Is that a pick 'em game <laughs> oh, right man. now? It's here at a pick 'em game. It is in Washington, but the Panthers are coming out to ball this uh, Saturday. Uh, uh-huh. It's brand new, brand new Baker, brand new. Uh, you know that they're trying to play this is off. Baker, the starter. That's not what I'm. That's hearing. that. That's what I'm saying. Is they're trying to play this off. Uh oh, we're Uh-oh. up against we're, it. Here. Yeah, we're up against it. Okay. Okay. So no, finish this point. Yeah. though. I'm I'm intrigued. So what I'm saying is that, that they're trying to say that this is a, there's quarterback drama in Carolina when there's obviously not. Mm-hmm. Baker's the starter, but obviously Sam Darnold wants to come out and show what he's got. Baker's going to get a couple, uh-huh. you know, uh, series to show what he's got. So I think they're going to lay it on. On the commanders a little bit here, and it's out sure. of it's out of pick 'em game right now, and I I just don't believe in the commanders, so not against my Panthers. Lock it up, <laughs> lock it up. <laughs> that's a what? That's a big up. one right there, boys. All right, let's take a quick minute here to recognize one of our fabulous partners, Play Action Pools. Play Action has launched as the newest sports pool hosting platform, and is your new spot for all your football contest needs. Play today at PlayActionPools.com. Don't go anywhere, folks. This is WTL. And welcome back to WTL, everybody. I'm your host, Andy Classic. Joy by Gibran. Uh, this is Where's the Line? Yeah. The Parlay Pounder. <laughs> got to get into the yeah, UFC. Yeah, we got to get into the UFC. If we're going to start making some parlays, got to get in the UFC. There we go. <laughs> Fight night, Saturday. Yeah. August 13th in San Diego. Yep. Just like you said, yeah, the Octagon travels to sunny San Diego. There we go. The card features a number of exciting matchups, including two natives from California, Marlon Vera and San Diego's own Dominique Cruz uh, for the main event. Main event. But we want to, you know, kind of weasel our way into this that. This is a really deep card. It's a really I, deep there's card. There's a lot of holdover fights yeah. from last week, you know, for whatever reasons. Yeah, exactly. So a, there's a lot of value if you really want to dive into this card yeah. here. Up and down it, you can find spots, and we're going to find some for right sure. Now. I got two fights here, and like you said, they're they're prelim fights, they're early fights, yep, but yep. they're they're fights that I really think that I have a pretty good nail on. Okay. The first one is Nina Nunez, uh, wife of Amanda Nunez, a UFC double champion that yep. we just talked about yep. last week, yep. versus Cynthia Calvillo. Uh, and this is Calvillo. this is just a really good fight. Uh, Calvillo, after a six and one start uh, in her UFC. You know UFC career. Uh-huh. Uh, you know there was talk about her being the new you know title challenger and everything. Sure, sure. She you know she's kind of in a low point right now. She, they kind of threw up against the wall against some of the best uh, flyweights in, in the division yeah. that kind of had her way with her. She has lost three. Uh, three straight, and uh, the last two being destructive knockouts to her. Uh, she needs a win bad to, you know, pretty much stay in the UFC at this point. Uh, desperate fighters, in my mind, can be very dangerous in fights like yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, she's she's the dog here. I mean, if you're just looking at rankings, she's ranked twelfth contender. Yeah, Nunez is number nine contender right it, now. Right, like you're saying, uh, she is picked to win. She's at a minus one ninety to win on my mm-hmm. book. Yeah. Uh, I think it's different for some people, but uh, fortunately, not that much. yeah, I mean, not, that much. not that much. It's not that it's not crazy. That's what I'm saying. But fortunately, uh, Calvillo here, uh, she gets a foe that has only fought twice over the last three years. Oh wow! Uh, add to the fact that those were both losses, and that Nina Nunez is 36 years old at this point, and her overall record's 10 and seven. Like. Exactly. What am I scared of here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It seems that you Her know wife can't come in the octagon, right? <laughs> no, she can't. No, she, no tag team. No stuff. tag team stuff. Okay. So it, it seems that Cynthia here uh, will be getting a major step down in competition from the likes of her pre- previous foes like Jessica Andre and uh, Caitlin Chudigan. Uh-huh. So I really think she takes this one out. My prediction is that she wins by unanimous decision. I think it probably goes all three rounds. Yeah. But I really think Calvillo right here at the minus one seventy or minus one ninety. 
that most people are seeing on their books is a lock. I think that's why I'm bringing this prelim fight up. You know, a lot of people get like, hey, pick one of the bigger fights in the card or whatever. This is where I see a for sure winner, a for sure parlay piece for people right. at a very good value at that minus 170, minus 190. Yeah. So. And I think it's going to move in a direction that people don't want it to go. I think she's going to be at a minus 200, 250 by the time this fight so. goes. because that's, that's the way this line's moving. Exactly. So locking in right now, uh, Calvillo is going to win this fight. I think uh, I, I think it's going to go all the way, but it's going to be uni- a unanimous decision. It's going to be, yeah, it's probably going all the way. Their average fight times are at 12 and 13 minutes. Yeah. Neither one wins a lot by KO or, or TKO. Right. And this all leans towards what you're saying. And you might have a nice little parlay pick there yeah. in your back pocket for a little later on. Another fight you were looking at. Osborne versus yep. Tyson Nam. Nam. Yeah, and plus Tyson 205. Nam. Right. Osborne minus 245 in mini books. Yeah. Um, oh boy, a big favorite. Yeah, he is the big favorite here, Andy. Uh, like you said, Ode Osborne, the Jamaican <laughs> sensation. Uh, great I, nickname. I, it's it's, it's really nickname. good. Uh, Osborne versus Nam has to be, I think, a contender for fight of the night on this card at UFC San Diego. The duo is a pair of exciting flyweight strikers, and for very different reasons. <laughs> Osborne is lightning quick and has a, a wide variety of attacks, uh-huh. while Nam is just one of those few guys at 125 that can knock your lights off. Uh, so, so Something's going to have to win here, Andy, and I'm going to go with the speed. I really think the speed in this versus power battle is going to win. Mm-hmm. However, it goes, f- fans, you're going to want to watch this. No matter what happens on this, no matter which way you're betting on this one, you're going to want to watch this. I think it's going to be fight of the night. But if I had to make a prediction on it, Andy, which is what we do. That's what we do. Osborne, by a unanimous decision in this one, I think he's too fast. I yeah. don't think he gets, you know, I don't think Tyson Nam is going to be able to knock him out. So I really think I'm going with the speed on this one. Osborne by unanimous decision. Oh, uh, and I was about to let you have it. I'm like, if you're not picking Osborne, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is uh, something of note here. But Osborne's only 11 and 4. With yeah. One no contest, you know, kind of a goofy dealer. Uh, Nam, on the other hand, a lot more tread on the tires, 20 and 12 and 1 in right. his. And he's also, his last fight, the American, is coming off a loss. Yeah. Osborne's coming off a win. These are two fighters maybe going in different directions. They are. Both 5'7". Exactly. Both 126 pounds. Uh, should be a lot of fun, though. It should be. I mean, like I said. Uh, everything else looks pretty good. Yeah, here. fight of the night. Fight of the night. These both guys want to win. I just think Osborne's just a little bit faster, uh, and he's going to bring it home for me at that minus 280, uh, minus uh, 250, wherever you get him at. And this is another one that I think might creep up in a lesser value. So if you guys have it right now, definitely jump on it. And uh, Where it's at, because it's going to just keep climbing. I, I think, think it is Osborne. as well. Yeah, I mean, so. that's, that's kind of the, the 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 word I'm getting on the street is. You, <laughs> no doubt. You know, doubt. you do a little bit of homework, and uh, yeah, that's where everyone's kind of <laughs> leaning there. So can't argue that whatsoever. So let's move on to. Let's right? do it to the main event. Main let's, let's, event. Let's get where everybody's talking about. At, at, like we said, as there are several other undercard fights that are, you know, very intriguing from a better's perspective. Yes. Let's cover the main event. Uh, geez, this is going to be a very good one. Uh, five round bantamweight bout between uh, Marlon Vera and Dominic Cruz. Vera right now at most books is a minus two twenty five favorite. Yeah, big favorite. Yeah, I. I think I still I, got him at two forty. Yeah, I yeah. can still get him at two forty. Yeah, uh, on some you can still get him as low as two twenty five. Some at two forty. Uh, where's my book at right now? I'm gonna check. He's at all the way up at two sixty on my book. So, yeah. uh, wherever you can get him at lower, definitely get him. I believe that. Man, I think he's going to defeat Cruz here. Uh, Vera, Dominator. It, oh, that's your boy. It is my boy. And, you, you know, I have a lot of love for the, the old guys in the sport and uh, just, you know, people that have given their, you know, blood, sweat, and tears to this organization. He's a two-time champion. Uh, at age 36, he has certainly seen better days. We're talking Cruz here. Uh, uh-huh. But he is still one of the best fighters in the division, obviously. Having won his last two fights, Cruz is a legend. Yeah. <laughs> He also has some well-rounded skills. Excellent, However, excellent record, twenty-four and three. Yeah, no, he is definitely he's a legend. He's one of the best bantamweights in the history of the sport. Mm-hmm. However, one of his big flaws is he's he's been super inactive. 
ever since joining the UFC in 2011, Cruz is just seven and two. Mm. So, having missed huge chunks of his career due to injuries, he is still very talented, and you yeah. can't count him out. You can't count him out in this fight. Both you, knees have, have been operated on. It, exactly. And what he's trying to do right here is make one last title run before he hangs it up. But this is a very tough matchup to come out of the gate with. Yeah, Cru- Cruz has looked good as of late, but... Vera has even looked even better. He is one of the best bantamweights in the world. He is coming off the biggest win of his career over Robert Font. At just 29, Vera is right in his athletic prime. Yep. He has won his last three fights in very impressive fashion and just keeps improving with every fight. His striking is on point. His ground gaming is even better. A lot of people are thinking that he might be able to to actually submit uh, Dominic Cruz would just yeah. skyrocket his career through the roof. Uh, he has an impressive record, like you said, 13-6 and six in the UFC. He is closing in on a title shot. He, if he wins this, he is right on the doorstep. That's the speculation. They're going to the title. Exactly. You know, right? So... Uh, cr- you like Vera, but you don't like Vera. <laughs> yeah, I like Vera in this one. I have to go with Vera to win this one. Uh, the Ecuadorian. Yeah. Although I think it might be in decision uh, against Cruz since he is so tough to finish. Uh, I don't know. He is yeah. so tough to finish. And he does outweigh him by a lot, 150 to 136, 137. Yep. So he's got the pounds on him there, but he doesn't have the reach. He doesn't. Vera's got the reach on him there by a so couple inches. So he might be inches. able to keep him at bay a little bit. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And and you, you talked about two guys going in different directions. Vera sitting at number five. For sure. Uh, Cruz, the dominator. At number eight contender right now. Exactly. And a lot of people are saying the winner of this is going to get a shot at the belt. Yep. And Vera is primed to get there, coming off a monster win, as you mentioned. Uh, and that's why this line, I think this line mimics what we're seeing with Osborne and Nam. For it's sure. It's going to keep going the other way. Yeah. Like I, the, the, the We've sh- already seen it. This this opened up at about a, 200, a minus 200. Yeah. On my book, it's already up to minus 260. I wouldn't be surprised if it's at minus 300. By the time this fight yeah. actually kicks off on Saturday, we might be seeing Vera at a minus 300. So if that does happen to you guys, if you're sitting there Saturday and you want to bet this fight, you got to look into some of those other you know those those other things that we always talk about is uh will he win by decision will he win by submission will he win by knockout you're gonna have to look at those prop bets and see what you believe will happen if anything is going to happen i believe this thing goes to the distance and he wins by decision but if you want to get a little bit squirrely with your money vera always has a chance to knock people out and submit them so you can go either way with that uh, I'm not going to touch that. I'm taking him on the money line at minus 260 at this point right now. All right, and, and I mean, I, once again, I was going to call you out. Yeah, uh, I thought you were. I thought you were determined to take the dominator. Well, there. It's, it's bit me the last few weeks, Andy. So it taking, you know, I took Gustafson. in. He's you know one of my ride or die yeah. guys from way yeah. back in the day, and he didn't do it for me. And then I took you know a couple guys last week that I shouldn't uh, have took. So yeah, those old fighters, man. Like there's a time. There is a time. There's a time when Gotta they cut it off. Got to hang them up. Yes, sir. All right, so. Mr. Parlay Ponder, yeah. you got a parlay play for <laughs> I the do. folks. I do. So it's pretty much just running back what we just said, Andy. We're uh, starting this thing off with Cynthia Calvillo at a minus 190 for the first piece of this parlay. Uh-huh. We got Ode Osborne at minus 280 to for the second leg, and then we got Marlon Vera money line at minus 260. You're putting a unit on that, $100 to receive $186. Okay. It's, All right. it's not the best value parlay. Eh. But we think this is going to happen. We think this; these are the right outcomes of these fights. So I think I can hit three for three on this one and just the bank the one eighty six. The well, and what you're talking about here, as far as value in your parlay, pitch, yeah, these are heavy favorites. Okay, yes. So that's why the payout isn't as high as if I mean, you if, were putting plus money. Two of them were plus money. Last exactly, week. and those are you the know? parlays that you want to look at if if you have confidence in that what i'm saying is these are my three most confident plays of the night on this card and that's what i'm throwing my money on all right well let's take a quick minute here to recognize one of our fabulous partners that is the nebraska brewing company boasting world class in every glass i've been enjoying the award-winning cardinal Fine. Pale ale. What do you got going on over there? Yeah, I'm sitting with the Taco Vesa every night. It is the best beer uh, that I know (laughs) of. Uh, So uh, I love it, and we're going to keep sipping on it. All right. Don't go anywhere, folks. This is WTL. WTL.